Good morning and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Winter weather has returned to the great state of Oklahoma. Many families are still without power, trees are down, limbs are broken and busted, and now the work begins. The hardest part about these ice storms is the fact that there's just not a lot you can do to prepare. Well, SUNUP's Dave Deacon shows us some new technology that is at least making it possible to have a warning. Winter storms usually bring snow and sometimes ice. Well, the snow is good because it helps bring moisture to the ground and helps our crops later on in the season. But the ice, on the other hand, usually just brings a lot of damage and headaches to rural Oklahomans. It's been pretty tough. The pipe's frozen, uh, well houses frozen. You can see how much ice is on that round bell. We've been hammered now twice with this blizzards. We're about to run out of uh, a lot of the hay. Over the past decade, Oklahoma producers, and Oklahomans alike, have endured quite a few ice storms. One of the most severe was in 2007, a storm that killed more than a dozen people and caused millions of dollars in damage. If only the electric companies knew where the outages might occur, they could better prepare and restore electricity faster. Well, now they can, thanks to Sid Sperry, a man who has been working with electric companies for years. We laid out the parameters for what I felt like, based on my years of experience in the electric utility industry, uh, such as rainfall amounts, uh, freezing rain amounts, temperatures, uh, wind speeds and wind direction and put those into an algorithm so that we could project the a type of damage level to anticipate during an ice storm. Meteorologist in charge Steve Piltz at the Tulsa National Weather Service was the man behind the algorithm. He helped Sid's ice predictor idea come to life. We filter his experiences through our forecast grids and it comes up with a way that we can estimate the impacts to the public and that allows the emergency management folks and utility companies to plan for the, the contingencies and the possibilities when we face an ice storm situation. What we've done is we've taken SIDS index and we've color coded it so that you can get an indication of just at a glance what the potential impacts are. So you go from yellow that would be cautionary just like a traffic light type of thing where power outages may or may not occur, that's the lower end of the index, but it's something that you at least ought to prepare for that possibility. Then you step up into the, uh, into the oranges and the reds. Uh, as you go into that zone, power outages are becoming more definite, and then it's just a matter of the duration, how, how long will the outages be. And as you go into the, the purple and the black there, and you're talking, for, talking about power outages that will last several days, if not several weeks in some areas. We can't prevent the ice from doing its damage right now, but what we can do is get the power back on quicker after it's happened. The storm event that we just recently had uh, in 2010 now um, put down in in a lot of cases put down close to an inch and a half to two inches of moisture so that that's very good for crops now when we get into livestock it's a different situation um, and it really depends on whether or not you have water um, do you have you know cattle that will stay in the field uh, because the fences are up but maybe don't have electricity or was the storm so severe that it brought down your fence and so now you've got to put those up as a visual break uh, to the cattle. And no one knows more about building fences than this man, Jerry England, a producer in McLean County who has had to rebuild his fences more than once. You guys have been kind of hit with a lot of natural disasters yeah. here lately. I mean, you had you had this go on right now, yeah. but earlier in the year you had fires. Yeah, we had a we had a, a wildfire that came. It started about seven mile across there and burnt houses. Uh, we were fortunate that my daughter and our house didn't get burnt, but we got a cabin there that we lost it and lost a shop and. Uh, Oh, just, oh, just lost tires off of almost every thing that I had that had tires on it, mm -hmm. burnt the tires off of them. A lot of these fences that we're having to rebuild now, we just got finished with them from the wildfire. Mm. 
and that that's probably the major thing now is is the fences well jerry do you mind showing us uh, oh no i don't mind showing you at all let's go look at some of those fences and okay. some of the ice well jerry it looks like uh looks like you got a little ice on your fence oh yeah wow i have miles of this <laughs> and what we'll uh what we'll start doing until we were hoping today that uh, the temperature be high enough to melt all the ice right. off of these limbs where we can get in here with a chainsaw. But what we'll start doing is these areas where the trees are only along the fence and we can get to it with the tractor, we'll start by getting moving all these off with the tractor. And what you have to be careful about is, you know, one of these chunks coming down and hitting the windshield off the tractor, that's not good. So you got to be real careful. But we'll get started on some of this today. Jerry has his work cut out for him. He'll rebuild the fence, wait for his truck bed to thaw so he can haul, wait for his power to return, all while making sure that his cattle don't wander off. What, what, what did you hear about the uh, ice? But Jerry says it's just part of living the country life. Yeah, They're, these people that go get that steak at Cattleman's, they just need to know what it takes to get that steak on the table. Mm -hmm. 